Hello, welcome back to A Keeper of the Prophecies, uh, Thief 2 Van Mission Campaign. Uh, we've just finished the first mission, which was in two parts. We broke into a kind of factory that was on top of a mountaintop, uh, where someone there has stolen my mechanical eye that the hammer was made for me because they wanted to study it or to copy it. Still don't really know why, but I managed to get my eye back. Which is good, because now I can see out of both eyes, and more importantly, I'll be able to use my zoom. Um, I don't know whether anything that happened there will uh, become relevant later, but the master of the police, who uh, who ran it, was kind of a nasty fellow actually, all things considered. Uh, the place manufactured instruments of torture both uh, Iron Maidens and electric torch devices. Um, but anyway, the master of the place offered me, uh, just just as I uh, was about to leave, offered me uh, the the running of the shop um, at the place, because he was uh, basically not long for the world. Uh, it's definitely not garage kind of thing anyway, so that's not an offer he'll be taking up, I think. Anyway, on to a second mission. Let's find out what happens. This is a briefing mission. Play non-stop without saving or reloading. Use the mouse to look wherever you want. That's an easy objective. All right, let's let's see how it goes. Quite a cemetery. Just wondering when the briefing starts. <laughs> audacity to march on without us. Forty-seven years ago, the Hammerites cleared this land and set a cornerstone within what was then known as the Deep Wood. And to the great dismay of the darker forces who once lived there, the cathedral would rise up to become the most magnificent building ever constructed. The hands of five thousand masons laid stone upon stone, year upon year, and the hands of 75,000 pious Hammerites paid their tithes, week by week, until the great edifice took shape and became what we now see. It was to stand forever, they said, against every form of evil. Yet those who were alive at the beginning, the workmen, the priests, and the ordinary tithe payers, most have since died. So much for that end to every form of evil. Like the Hammerites, my father was a great believer in his own destiny. As his life drew to a close, 
He secretly began to eliminate anyone who might stand in the way of his last will and testament. And as he quietly killed off all claims to his inheritance, I discovered and told him whatever he needed to know. It was not an easy way to survive. For my father, you must understand, was Solustus, the second lord and master of the Enterprise. And I? I was his faithful daughter, Alicia. Then there was Garrett, a keeper of the prophecies, they say although he would never admit to this. Seeking riches from a lord named Constantine, he lost an eye for his trouble. And even though the score had since been settled, Garrett wandered the streets in a darkness of his own making, until one day, my father took an interest in him. Solustus was now a very old man. And some even whispered that he might wish to make Garrett the third Lord of the Enterprise. And so it was entirely natural for me to observe this Garrett at close hand in order to send my father the most reliable information about him. And that is what I did. One night, after watching Garrett drink himself into a stupor, I decided to act. He was becoming ever more depressed, yet he chose to do nothing about his missing eye, even though the Hammerites had promised him a new mechanical eye, which held remarkable, perhaps even magical, powers. But as I returned to the old village with Garrett's new eye, I was chased, then attacked, and the eye was taken from me. Later, Garrett himself found my body, lying in and as preposterous as it might seem, I have been dead ever since, floating through this world as a formless apparition. And now we see Garrett struggling through his nightly round a trek made more difficult now that he has been poisoned by someone who would rather see him dead than ever take possession of my father's estate. I do what I can to help him along, but the healing vials he will find tonight are only a temporary measure to keep him alive long enough until I can find a more permanent solution. Oh, that was an easy mission. Uh, well, uh, we found zero lit out of zero. What happens after the briefing? So, Alicia's dead, but her ghost is still around, and there's, um... So, as I recorded, the, the second master of the Enterprise uh, did indeed offer us the job. Maybe the story is that I, the Garrett takes him up on it. I don't know. Still doesn't seem like Garrett's cup of tea. 
Let's find out. Hallucinations. You have been poisoned. Before the good townsfolk discover your rotting corpse, discover some hard evidence about who might be trying to kill you. Mortician Mega Tree is known to have a pocket watch that might come in handy on a night like this. Find it. There will be enough dying tonight. Don't kill any unarmed people. Now I do believe this mission actually has a time limit. So hopefully I'll complete it in the in time. Uh, I'm gonna go on easy, just sorry, normal just in case. Because the time limit is longer. That way I think it's like two hours rather than 90 minutes or something. We'll see, I don't particularly want to feel rushed. Um, well, I don't know how, if it's anything like the previous level, I'll definitely be running in circles a lot, so I'd rather have some time. Let's get started. <coughs> 7.55pm. Oh, if I didn't know any better, I'd swear I felt like dog shit. At least, Garrett, you're still alive. Garrett? I didn't come here to visit you. I know I what you think, think about, about me. me. Oh, really? And how is it that you can read my mind? The fact that you avoid my grave says enough. enough. Garrett, I did, I did not, not betray you. you. Mm, that's not what your father said. You must you believe me. Yeah, well, I don't. And besides, how can it matter anymore? Even if you weren't spying on me, you're still dead, Lisha. <gasps> and it won't go away. It matters more than I can possibly say. And if you no longer have any hope, then you will never act when the time comes to act. You're beginning to sound just like the Keepers. Being dead adds a certain, shall we say, perspective on life. What the Keepers know and what they say is no longer a mystery to me. How about if you leave the living to me and the dying to you? Because you are dying too, Garrett. Need I remind you? And you have but one chance to live. The Keepers are in this place tonight. Listen to their advice. And for your own sake, do as they say. Why do you care so much about this? You must believe me. And you must believe me, Keepers. Keepers. Listen, Listen to them now, Gary, and do exactly, exactly as they say. say. Alright, well, because it's done, let's start with a save. Discover evidence about who's trying to kill you, find Mortician Mega Freeze Pocket Watch, and listen to the Keepers. Oh, gross. Puke. And we appear to be in a cemetery. It's not unlike the one from uh, Tracing the Courier. From Thief 2. Oh, I can't open that gate, so let's go around this way. Also, why not take a healing potion? Will apparently only give us a temporary respite. But maybe that's all we need. Alicia, daughter to Celestus II, born under the Raven Moon in the 19th year of Reticia de Perisiorum, died under the Owl Moon in the 4th year of Forsythius the Just. Strange place to just leave a skeleton lying around. Oh, it's a skeleton zombie. You look kind of stuck there, Mr. Skeleton. Skeleton. This one opens. Keepers. Garrett, with whom do you speak this night? As a matter of fact, Caliph, it's the ghost of an old associate of mine. You keepers do believe in ghosts, don't you? It is the effect of the poison. You are hallucinating. This headache of mine is no hallucination. Nevertheless, the council has met, and 
it has been resolved that you must leave our world to find a more pure form of healing. The poison in you is far too powerful for any antidote known in this world. I always like how you keepers offer me alternatives. You can choose to stay and die, or you can leave. Yeah, and die somewhere else. <laughs> Some choice. Perhaps you do not understand how far matters have progressed, my friend. If you die in the coming days, then all that was foretold about you will be lost. If it was foretold about me, then why doesn't it just happen? That is not how sacred matters unfold. You must leave tonight as soon as possible. There is no time for argument. Please, Garrett, listen to what Keeper Orlet has to say. We are aware of an ancient precursor portal. We cannot tell you where it leads, but we can say that you must exit our world by this very gateway before the midnight hour. For on the last stroke of midnight, the foolish Hamrites plan to destroy this device. Gather the armaments from your home. Then find your way into the new Hammerite Cathedral. There you will find what you seek. Carefully observe the passing of time this night. For until the town clock strikes midnight, the portal will remain open. But if you have not yet crossed into the unknown by the last tolling of the midnight hour, then all will be lost. Now go, quickly. It would have been nice to warn me ahead of time, but no. It always has to line up with their damn prophecies. I wonder what would happen if I used their dusty old books to heat my apartment. Sure might save on firewood. Alright, well we have new objectives. Whoops, wrong button. Discover evidence about who's trying to kill us still. Blah blah blah. Before you can access the precursor portal, you must first enter the Hammerite area. Find your way inside the cathedral gate before 10 o'clock. And the uh, clock just struck eight, if I was counting correctly. A little well, inconvenient that they uh, had it happen at the same time as the speech, because it made it hard to keep track. Right, so here's a cemetery in the south. Our place is west. Cathedral's east. A warehouse full of giants, or maybe just a big one. Some bridges, a dam. Uh, the cemetery looks north to me. Again, it's basically the same one from uh, Tracing the Courier in Thief 2, which I like. I like that. No! I will not hear of this lunacy any longer. You must reconsider. Please, Herolium, turn away from this insanity. But definitely, my dear wife. I do not pursue this course out of lunacy, for it is the very order of the hammer which doth betray us by refusing to change with the times. And you, an old man, are you ready to change? To leave all that you have ever known? And why? To follow some wavered priest and alchemist. You are wrong, Herolius. So very, very wrong. And I must say... Then you will do it without me. Leave now and do not return, for I will never again look upon your face. Well, he's been told. Right, I just scroll into my inventory and notice I've got some doctor's advice. That sounds important to read. Garrett. The blood sample you have supplied reveals what I feared most. You have been poisoned. And worse, it is a magical element, and I cannot cure you by any means. This poison does not always kill in the normal sense of the word. Zombism is a distinct possibility in your case. Healing potions will help you for a time, but beware. When you begin to feel strong pains upon drinking such a potion, then the end is near, and you must remove yourself from others for their safety. If you wish, you may visit my office in the morning, and I will supply some final comforts. My deepest sympathies, Harry Grindius, attending surgeon. Uh. Good. Time to 
get out of here while I still can. Where's my apartment left? Picture of the street outside. Burning my books. Ah, uh, the welcome from Celestis Industries, which I read last time. A note. Mr. Garrett, as you've suggested, I have routed the wiring to your cupboard door latch through the attic, taking advantage of how you wish the release to be located on the ceiling. Sisterness Hunter, Old Village Electricians. So, the switch is on the ceiling now, is it? Well, I've got some equipment here. It is indeed just past 8 o'clock. And I expect that clock is keeping uh, proper in-game time. Alright. Let's collect all this. Uh, finally, a note here. What does it say? Contract proposal. Ah, this is the uh, contract proposed by uh, Solustus, second lord of the Enterprise. On this third day of the El Moon in our fourth year, under the reign of Fosithius the Just, I, Austin Silius Solustus, second lord of the Enterprise, being of sound mind and will, do offer to transfer full ownership of the entity known as Solustus Industries, including any and all assets, patents, products, facilities, inventories, and rights unto one Garrett of the Old Village, known to be a keeper of the prophecies, a thief, and heretic, but henceforth forth to be known only as the third Lord of the Enterprise, upon his agreement given in writing. Sworn witness and recorded this day by Franticius Esquire and Chief Counsel of the Enterprise. So that's... I still don't know why Garrett is even bothering to think. Can't I take my gold candlesticks with me? Yeah, valuable loot. Well, never mind, let's... Uh... Leave my flat. <coughs> oh dear. Time for a healing potion, I think. It's, uh... <sighs> Wait, what? Ah, okay, it does heal me, but uh, it hurts at the same time. That's interesting. So where am I going now? Uh, garage place, town square, alright, so I came to my place from the south, and now I'm heading out north, okay, that makes sense. Uh, Finders is trying to kill me, I find Mortician Mega free, got to find my way to the cathedral with 410, alright. Anything happening here this time? Nope. Oh, what's this? was their gate. Henceforth, all deliveries must be come by way of the western freight elevators, by order of Faustus, Captain of the Guards, Solastus Industries. Oh, the uh, canal is frozen over. That's, that's interesting. I can't walk underneath it. I probably don't want to swim in it, right? Nope. It's cold. Is it Fortus? What is thy decision? Art thou with us, or dost thou yet cling to thy hammerite ways? What is my decision? I have made my decision, Korg, and I will speak it plainly. With my hammer as I oh. smash thy wayward skull! No, they saw me. That's not supposed to happen. Help. That's uh, somewhat inconvenient. What's that invisibility? fight amongst each other there. I suppose I should have made my way out of there sooner. Mm. Hey, buddy. You, you look 
I'd like somebody who could help me. Could you give a go at this door? <clears throat> the missus. <clears throat> She's locked me out again. Says I can't come home drunk. <clears throat> Good thing I'm, 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 I'm not. <laughs> I drop it and he just has magnetically snaps back to his hand again. Yeah, good thing you're not drunk at all. There you are. yourself if I so much as smell one drop of liquor on your breath you'll be keeping the gutter warm again tonight that's for sure oh I should have listened to my mother she was right about you all along what is the matter with you Kevil? I wash your clothes I buy your food I clean this house and what do I get in return a lazy stinking drunk and liquor for a husband where have you been Kevil? I can't stay up all night waiting for you to come home don't you know I swear oh you've been seeing that woman again that little heart haven't you well you can just be sure I'll have your head this time if it's true you can't keep spending my money like this I where Kevin find a broom and clean up that mess you're making. I don't want to come down in the morning to find so much as a shard of glass on that floor. Now get your ass in here anyway. And how, how did you get in anywhere? I swear I locked that door, Kevin. Are you listening to me, Kevin? I don't think he's listening to a word you said. It's no wonder that guy's got a drinking problem. Ha ha ha. Snarky guy. Alright, where are we? Unless the map doesn't show me where. We must be up near the West Bridge here. What's all this? Empty vial next to them. A doctor says that I be poisoned. That ain't good because he also says that I'll probably turn into a zombie when I die. So I'm writing this note in case you find me dead body. If I be a zombie now, you has to use this holy water here to finish me off. I don't fancy the thought of walking around like a zombie. And like my doctor says, it ain't so for nobody. Any house. Which holy water? This holy water. Well, you know, you'll be fine as a zombie. It's, uh, it's an honourable profession. Many great people will want zombies too. Reward for the capture of Garrett, known to inhabit the old village and surrounding vicinities. 200 gold paid upon apprehension, alive or dismembered. 100 gold if dead. Deliver under Faustus, Captain of the Guard, Celestus Industries. Wait. Is that another keeper? You pay more if I'm dismembered? No, that's a prisoner. More if I'm dismembered than merely ordinarily dead. Oh man. Alright. I mean, Faustus wants me dead, but does that mean he poisoned me? Oh, that's the river. Alright, this is the West Bridge, I guess. Oddly, it's the water level higher on the side. Ah, uh, yeah, that's a noisy ice. It's noisy as tiles. What do we have down here? <coughs> Oh, maybe that wasn't the frozen water that was hurting me before. It was just simply poison continuing to hurt me. I don't know. <coughs> What's in this chest? More water arrows and a speed potion. Whoops. Oh shit. Uh, I need to get out of here. Where's that speed potion? Oh, I don't think I need it. Oh, I think I do need it. Yikes. Ow, oh, that nearly killed me. <coughs> 
Well, maybe stay off the ice, huh, Garrett? Might be a good plan. Is that hitting me anymore, or is that stopped? <sighs> Pinch and then security services, private investigation, contract guards, alarm systems, background checks, special assignments. No job too small. Closed until further notice. Well, the door is open, that's... Now this is odd. Mr. Private Security here didn't even bother to close his own front door. This place has been ransacked. This is a guy who was after me. Uh, so... Something is going on. Perhaps this note will tell us more. Pinch and then. I am exceedingly disturbed to find that you have not yet disposed of my present difficulties. For the money I have already paid, you were to remove those who threatened me with information. And for the money you were promised, you were to destroy that vermin of the old village, and yet he still lives. Do I find you busily at work scheming a solution to my dilemmas when I come to see you? No. For instead I find you asleep. I do not pay you to sleep. Franticius, High Counselor and Active and Chief Executive, Solastus Industries. Still a vibe, okay. I'll take another healing potion from the sink, alright. For all the good it does me. Oh. Someone else? Well, well if it is my old friend. I wonder what happened to you. I wonder if he's also zombified. Oh, there's a vial there. Might be dead. What's his journal say? Business logbook, fiscal year 23, day one. The annual meeting went well and the investors have been paid their dividends. Now back to work. Day two. An assistant to the undersecretary in charge of idiocy at the office of the viceroy arrived unannounced. Our region has been falling behind in the collecting of feral children for proper disposal, if I heard him correctly. I made pleasantries and vacant promises of support until the fool departed at long last. Just how can a few homeless children matter when murderers and thieves walk these very streets? Day 6. At the noon hour, Lady Sheridan arrived in a fluster, asking me to investigate her husband. Seems he came home three nights this week wearing only women's undergarments. Some jobs really are too small. Now for some important business. I received word this afternoon from my corporate account stating that he wishes me to eliminate a certain vermin of the street. Willing to pay 2,000 gold with a 1,000 down payment. Must be one hell-raising troublemaker, let me guess. Also, he appears interested in acquiring a certain optical device. He will meet with me tomorrow to discuss details. Day 7. This morning my corporate client brought forth the details of his intrigue. I am to acquire a mechanical human eye from the hammers. An interesting assignment, but one better suited for a thief. Given my aversion to Crag's cleft prison, I declined the job for now. Trespassing within the walls of a Hammerite cathedral is out of the question. I did attempt to raise the matter of the vermin, but was rebuffed. Apparently the deal is all or nothing. Day 12. The corporate client returned today, demanding in a fit of his characteristically overwrought bluster that I find a way to acquire that mechanical device for him. It appears that my competitors feel likewise about the hammers. So now he comes crawling back to persuade Pinch Endon with even more money. It is a tempting offer, but I have kept the hammers at bay for 22 years, and I'm not about to take any risks with them now. So once again, again I declined, whereupon he made his exit muttering veiled threats in my general direction. Day 13. Nothing from the corporation at all today, so I contacted my old friend Faustus who runs security up there. Thought he might know something, yet I've just received word this evening, and it appears that Faustus knows nothing about any mechanical eyes. But he did to request more poisoned apples, which I gladly supplied. Day 14. Lady Sheridan paid another visit to discover what I might have learned regarding her wayward husband and the source of his undergarments. I had to invent awkward fables since I haven't looked into this matter at all. Note to self, even small jobs require some attention. Day 15. My corporate client returns this evening and now he has a plan. He claims that a courier will be transporting the mechanical eye this very night, and if I can muster my men quickly it should be a simple matter to acquire the device with a minimum of trouble. 
I agree to his plan, provided the courier is not a Hammerite. And this, my client assures me, will be according to my requirements. It appears then that my ordeal with this mechanical eye can finally be resolved. Day 16. Disaster! The so-called courier was none other than the very daughter of Master Celestus himself, and somehow Lady Alicia was bludgeoned during the operation. I have interviewed all of my men, and none admit to the killing, nor do I suspect them greatly given the look in their eyes. But to be safe, I have taken the usual precautions. Note to self, replenish my supply of slow-acting poison. Day 17. After careful investigation, I am convinced that all will be well. Strangely, there have been no suspicions regarding the death of Lady Alicia. The corporate client is pleased with events, and the old man himself paid no attention to anyone at her funeral, except his physicians. Now I wish I had not poisoned my men. Day 24. Sleep comes in small doses. Somehow I have finally disturbed the dead after all these years spent adding to their ranks. For a ghost, as best as I can determine, has decided to haunt me here, and even at the brothels where I have sought refuge. Tonight I drank myself into a stupor, but with no relief whatsoever. Day 25. Following a long, sleepless night, I was startled this morning by Megatree, the mortician, who came crying into my office seeking his missing daughter. After some simple investigation, I had the unfortunate duty to inform him that her body had just been found beneath an opening in the river ice. Witnesses saying that she was being chased by bounty hunters seeking feral children when she fell through into the river. Very sad, even for me, to deliver the sodden body unto her father, still clutching her doll. Day 31. Today my corporate client reaffirmed his wish for me to exterminate that vermin of the old village. And to this requirement he has added a new request for me to relieve him of a certain personal headache. Blackmailers, as he calls them, have apparently unearthed some previous intrigue, and they demand money for their silence. This second item may be a difficulty, since I have learned how one man's blackmailer can be another man's opportunist, and we opportunists must stick together. Day 37. I am not well. It has been a fortnight since I have come to be continually haunted. The apparition arrives in my sleep and insists that, that I do its bidding. Only after I obey am I relieved, until I must again repeat my slated delivery tasks. Much more of this haunting and I will most certainly take a double dose of what I am now spreading about town. Day 42. Today I received word, I believe it was today, from somebody complaining about contracts I made with him, but the details of his tirade escape me as to most other thoughts. I can no longer sleep at night and I am driven mad by these continuous ghostly visitations. This afternoon I drove poor Lady Sheridan down the street with the back of my sword, thinking her at first to be the apparition of my dreams. I hope she is not too upset, for she has been a valued customer. Day 44. More evil abounds, or perhaps we are relieved of it. This very evening I have learned that Master Solastus lies at death's door. No one in this town will miss his dark cloud when it finally passes, cold-fisted soul that he is. In another time I might be glad for the ensuing intrigue and manoeuvring that this will certainly create. Such times are always good for my business. But now, I just need to sleep. Day 46. I am at an end. The apparition gives me no rest at all, and so I have chosen to fight it among the netherworlds. Now I drink this potion. Now I finally sleep. Now that's what I call a serious hallucination. Yes. yes. Quite. Quite. Pinchinjin tried to kill me three times. So as far as I'm concerned, he had it coming to him. And he finally got to you on his fourth try? No. His occasional employer the mysterious corporate client of his journal became so annoyed by delays that he killed me himself. Just as I suspect, he is also trying to kill you. But why? His name is Francisius, my father's former high counselor. And right now, he's the most powerful executive within Solustus Industries. Francisius wrote the contract that my father gave to you, so he knows exactly how you could one day claim as your own, yet Frantitius wants the Enterprise for himself. He can have it. But until you are dead, Garrett, there will always be a question of legitimacy. So, how did he manage to poison me? I can't tell you everything, Garrett. Besides, you wouldn't believe me even if I did tell you. I suggest you visit the legal offices owned by Frantitius. He spends most of his time there. 
so I'm sure you'll find all the evidence you need. You know what, and kill this guy for my trouble? Your choice. Yet, it would be a waste of time to kill him now. Strange. She doesn't seem to want revenge. Just what the hell does she do? Right, well, that's not a new objective, but uh, we should try and find the legal officers. Oh, right, that's the other side of the canal. Uh, this must be the. I see. This must be the uh, giant warehouse. I mean, it looks like a giant warehouse. There's a ramp on the way in. Oh, it's up here on this ledge. Well, ouch. It's uh, a slippery as ice for some reason. Well, there doesn't seem to be anything up on this one. How about if we jump across? If I can safely jump across. We'll, we'll try it. Nope. <coughs> Ouch. Here I am. Well, in addition to the plague, my healing potions it seems, I'm hurting myself through simple gravity. Not such a good idea. Uh, oh. Well, we fell through the ice just down there. Stop dying so much. Somebody else poisoned? Without any notes as to how or why. Who's been poisoning everyone in town and why? There's another. Huh? Who are you? Get out of here. Okay. Well, I'm not even hiding. somebody else to bother. I see a gas arrow up there. Oh. And a fire, fire arrow there, too. And a healing potion! Well, that's the thief there. He's upset with me. happen. <coughs> okay, I still keep dying here. I'm not kidding. Come on out. Of here. Well, that's the way to North Bridge, I guess, or is that here? No, that's, that must be the dam because the river level drops quite a lot. I 
can't pick a lock, can I? Alright, well, I'll wait till Mr. Thief there has decided to go his merry way. See if there's a way to progress over there. Where are these loud footsteps I'm hearing? Oh, there's a guard up on the ledge. Interesting. Well, that wasn't a door that opened. That doesn't look like a door that opens. And here we are back here again. Maybe I should try and get on that ledge. Let's try that again. No, I don't seem to be able to jump from this ledge. I'm just sliding. How odd. Doesn't actually go around and join up, does it? Yeah, I suppose it sort of does. So maybe we don't actually need to jump. Yeah, I'm gonna need to jump now. All right. Let's not go that way. Let's just see if I can make my way through the warehouse. Without falling off large crates this time. Oh, he's walking along the dam. No, it doesn't seem like I can progress that way. Unless down at the water level, but no, it doesn't seem to be any kind of ladder or anything. Well, there's a ladder here to get me out of the ice, but uh, the ice collapses again, I expect. Don't think it's gonna do me any good going down there. I'll save and find out. How about that? Nope, nothing here. All right. Make another hard save. Make a few periodically because of this whole silly time limit business. And that slowly killing myself accidentally along the way business. So where do I go from here? I mean, there's stuff this side of the... Uh, down, but maybe that's not the way to go. If that isn't the way to go, what is the way to go? Uh, to the town square, maybe? Can I get to the town square? That's a good question. Well, yes, I can get to the town square. Seems a much better way to go. Oh, and there's a way onto that ledge as well. Directly from Frantitius myself. Happened earlier tonight. Some kind of slow acting poison. I don't know, Listus. Huh? It's a damn shame as far as I can see. But since when did you start giving a damn about Master Voluptus? No. No. Let the old swindler rot. It's just that I'll have to deal with his estate for my money. <laughs> now I suppose this glutton dies just to cheat you out of your last invoice. I wouldn't put it past him. So, somebody finally poisoned my old friend, Master Slurst. That's one less nutcase I'll have to deal with. Yes, my friend, it is true. Speaking of nutcases... Slurstus is dead. 
And the one who poisons him has also poisoned you. You don't need to shadow me, Caitlin. You must seek this knowledge, Garrett. Or it will be important to know who has poisoned you. And I don't need any more of your instructions. One minute you want me at the cathedral, now you want me playing detective. Will you keepers make up your fucking minds? I would not tell you this, Garrett, if it were not important. You must discover who has tried to kill you. Tried? You mean succeeded? For otherwise, you will not know how to act when the time comes. And what about your dusty old books, Caleb? What did they say about this latest requirement? Is this also foretold a thousand years ago, or are you just improvising as you go along? Caleb, Caleb, damn keepers. All quiet now. Must have been rats. Definitely rats. I don't even didn't even see this keeper who was talking to me, but uh, given the keeper sign statues on that clock tower, I'm guessing he must have been there, and I just didn't happen to look in that direction. No. You're jumpy. Too much coffee. There's an armed stranger here. That's better. Less lights is always good. Oh dear, I continue to keep dying here. Oh, what have we got here? light. Okay. That was a waste of time. Somebody else hunting for me, huh? Bollocks. Go away. I don't have much time. I don't need you. It's harder for me. Oh, well, that was a waste. I hit the ledge. Just again. All right, let's try this again. Firstly, oh, he's over there hunting for me. Myself there too. Don't know if I can afford that. So who was that and why was he after me? Oh, that's where I came. It's the pub. Which doesn't open. When you feel that the end is near, please, for your family's sake, remove yourself from town so that your loved ones are not exposed to the danger of what you might become. If you wish, you may visit my office in the morning and I will supply whatever final comforts I can. My deeper sympathies, A. Grandius, attending surgeon. Oh, that's where I heard. Did you open, did you open that door? That's cheating. Oh, we have a building here. Apparently it's not open. Okay, and the guards over there. I, I, I'm harmless. Leave me alone. Sleep. I don't care if you're harmless. You know how to run and alert guards. That's a problem for me. Where is this mortician that we need to find? Sleep there. I'm almost dead. Uh, I don't have any evidence, although 
I had a keeper tell me whoever was trying to kill me was also the one who killed. What's his face? Celestus. Nay. Well, that's their uh, cathedral. But where's this mortician? Aha. Uh -huh. This is the doctor's house. Let's hope he has some healing potions for me, because I need a few. Rather than his house, <coughs> I will have that. Well, I just have this. Ouch! Oh, what's the note say? Doctor Grandius, I am not well this night. The numbness in my legs grows as does the frequency of my vomiting. I write this note in the hope that you will visit my room promptly upon your return. Astinsilus Solstus. What about in his surgery? His only surgical equipment is a saw. How comforting. Room one. Empty. Room two. Mostly empty. Ah. I'll take that. Do not disturb me unless you be the doctor for whom I sent. Astensilus Solestus. Property of Astinsilus Solestus, private. I do not know who has done this vile deed, but I strongly suspect Yolandus and Cobalus, given their evil eyes this past week. I had hoped Garrett might take charge and rid the enterprise of such insects, but alas, the pestilence seems to have rid itself of me. I suspect not my former wives nor their greedy children, for I have managed to attend to them before they were able to attend to me, except for Alicia, who managed to find her own grave apart from my plans for her. At least Franticius can still be trusted. Or can he? Do I hear my friendly hallucination again? I was hoping you would find this journal so you could see how my father was trying to kill me. How could you think I was spying on you for such a man? Sorry, Lish, but I don't buy it. Your old man could have had you spying on me and you killed in the same breath. Believe what you wish then, Garrett. But I see that you are running out of time. What's in it for you, Lisha? Always clever. Always watching your back. You don't trust anyone, do you, Garrett? Least of all someone, or should I say something with an ulterior motive. Then die. And become what I have become. A formless apparition. Uh, if I'm an apparition, that makes it easier to do thieving, right? Because I can just drift through walls. Uh, although I suppose it also makes it harder since my hands will probably drift straight through the piles of gold that I try and pick up. Uh, oh, that just looks outside. Alright, yeah, turn that off. Alright, well that's the doctor's residence. Doesn't really get me anywhere. Moves the block forward a bit, gives me more health. Those are both good things. But, um, no further on the morticians. Nee. 
What a ridiculous thought that would be. Oh, there's a gate over there. It goes to another part of town. Interesting. wonder if I can open it. Well, let's get rid of this numpty wandering around here. Nay, I want not my blood to spill. <coughs> what? Oh, no, I must have dropped it behind him. <coughs> dear, oh dear. Thanks for both the, this plague and his hammer. I'm somewhat more... I'm somewhat less healthy than I was a few moments back. Right, so I can't open this, but this wandering guard can. Hmm. What's going on over there? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Uh, I don't see anything now. Just want to shadow you through that gate. named Garrett Dr. Luck about our village and vicinities. Four cubits in height, eleven stone in weight, wearing black and purple garments, armed and extremely dangerous. In, Report any sighting this vermin immediately if thou value thy life. Balboas, captain of the town guards. Oh shit, he saw me. Arrows. I don't think I'm supposed to be in this part of town yet. And now I can't get back up there because I dropped a mine there. <coughs> and I'm slowly dying anyway. Um. Oh, there's someone going to, to die. Oh, they're already zombified. <coughs> and I'm continuing to die. care of them. Dear, dear, that was a mess. Ready ho, where am I? Uh, I must have crossed the north bridge. Can I cross this ice? I don't know. Let's find out. Apparently I can. Oh, I could across the bridge and come down there. Fair enough. It's 
So. Is this possible to come to this part of town? Oh, this was the way I was supposed to get there. What's it? Past that thiefy man. Although, how would I open this gate from this side? I don't know. Well, anyway, it is possible to get to this part of town. Clearly. However it's meant to happen, I don't know. Over here. We oh got you make that jump. Hello? Ah, I give up. There's no one here, guys. this place? Whose is this place? That's the mega free mortuary. Well, this is where I need to be. The Honorable Astinsilus Solustus, Second Lord and Master of the Enterprise. Family and friends are here with invited to offer condolences in the space provided in this book. Nice funeral home you got here, Megat. Been meaning to have a look see, me stepdad Edelian and all. But as far as this Master Celestus fellow you has all laid out, you can let the old bastard rot in your backyard like them other people they just found down south. He ain't being kind to nobody, and burning up his body is nothing but a waste of good firewood. I knows I can write in this book because nobody else will, that prick having no family or friends that he ain't already killed off himself. You know something? If I weren't so drunk, I swear I'd hear that heard that corpse of yours reason. I hope you ain't burying nobody who ain't dead already, you'll have to write a note to your mum. Gotta go for now, maybe we can meet for a drink sometime. Oh, by the way, sorry about puking up on your lawn last night. It's all soaked in and froze by now, so it shouldn't stick none until springtime. Dangers of leaving a visitor book unattended. Here are any guards in this place. Somebody left the fire going. And the whole desk can be searched. Now I'm going to need a key to uh, get at whatever's in the desk there. What's the time? Uh, half past eight or even 20, uh, 20 to nine. Time is getting on. Now I hear somebody. Don't want, don't want your lab equipment. Holy water. Hmm. Burial of the Undead, a reference manual for the practicing mortician. Published by the King's Association of Morticians and Undertakers. Woe unto to the ye who refuses not the lich of the undead. And my host, first high priest to the Hamrite Order. Introduction. In the present day, many of the kings practicing morticians no longer accept the existence of the undead, or as they are more commonly called, the zombies. But zombism remains a treacherous reality made all the more dangerous by our very own disbelief. During the nine years prior to this publication, 17 morticians have been discovered gored and dismembered by these mythical entities. And of those 17 unfortunate souls, two later became zombies themselves. What are the undead? According to the Hammerites, who have bravely studied a number of the deceased with this condition, it appears that the undead are actually quite dead in earnest. Yet it also appears that a magical force is at play which causes the observed ambulatory motions. In some cases, these zombies are enraged without reason, whereas at other times they appear to be under the direct control of a darker power. Whatever the source of their evil, these are extremely dangerous beings and must be handled with excessive caution. Handling of the Undead 
Our association has concluded that preservation of the undead is needlessly dangerous, and whenever possible, we strongly recommend that the zombized corpse be completely and immediately destroyed, by way of a thorough dousing of holy water followed by the complete burning of all dispersed remnants. However, it is also understood that some members of the rich and powerful may insist on a normal funeral. In such unpleasant circumstances, we'd recommend the following. Funeral Procedure for the Undead 1. While on display, the corpse must be sandwiched between two solid masonry slabs, the top cover weighing at least 50 stone. Such will trap an enraged zombie and provide an opportunity for mourners to escape an untimely awakening. 2. The corpse must be doused four times daily with a one-quarter concentration of holy water mixed with ordinary water. This will greatly subdue symptoms without causing dismemberment. 3. Several vials of fully concentrated holy water must be kept on hand at all times in case of emergencies. 4. Upon the conclusion of ceremonies, the corpse must be immediately and thoroughly dismembered by way of a liberal application of holy water. 5. All body parts must be collected and burned, and the ashes stored inside a sturdy metal casket, which is then heat welded shut. 6. The casket must be buried six cubits deep in an unmarked grave far away from human habitation. If possible, this grave should be located near the base of an active volcano with substantial lava flows. Final warnings. In all situations involving the undead, never touch the body. Use wooden instruments and thick leather gloves, all of which must be burned along with the corpse. Never bury a zombie's corpse whole. Some have been known to scratch and claw their way through several feet of solid stone, leaving the cemetery after 50 or 100 years of burial. In all cases, the zombie's corpse must be destroyed. Well, that seems like sound advice to me. Alright. Well, it has been uh, a bit over an hour, so I'm going to end this episode here, make myself a cover, and I will see you here for the next episode.